I can prescribe medication independently within my scope of practice. Mm. So well, you, you consult? As I do consult, role. yes. So, uh, yes. So like anybody will say, oh, I'm going to see my GP. I've got an appointment with the GP. Sometimes you think you're seeing a GP, but you might be seeing an advanced practitioner. It could be an OT. It could be a physio. It could be a nurse. It could be a dietitian and things like that. Well, that's yeah. actually interesting to know. <laughs> yeah. So the, the health visitor, how, how long does the... Let's say someone go, wants to go into health visiting. The first thing I'll tell them that is they should just write off two years of their life. <laughs> <laughs> Hello guys, welcome to yet another episode on your favorite podcast in the whole wide world. Today we have a special guest with us, as you can see, and we'll allow her to introduce herself. My name is Brenda Vardin. Um, I am a, a, an advanced nurse practitioner working in primary care. Brilliant. Advanced nurse practitioner. I've heard about that um, a number of times but I don't understand exactly what it means. So um, an advanced nurse practitioner is um, a nurse who has worked um, to a master's level um, in their special field. So you can have an advanced nurse practitioner in secondary care, which is in the hospitals, in different specialities. You can have an advanced nurse, nurse practitioner in primary care, so working in GP surgery, or working in uh, in the community like a community advanced nurse practitioner so seeing patients in homes and things like that um and you can have them um in private care as well so we've all special gone to train um in our specialist areas that we work mm -hmm. to to be able to deliver high quality care um you don't only have advanced nurse practitioners you've got advanced occupational therapist, you've got advanced physiotherapists, oh. you've got advanced dietitians, wow. you've got advanced pharmacists as well. Wow. So we all carry um, a prescribing as well background. So mm -hmm. we can, I can see a patient today, um, take a history, do a diagnosis and treat. So I can manage a patient just like a doctor can. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. F fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> fabulous. Yeah. So, yeah. So, when did the nursing journey actually start? Is it in Ghana or you? So, my nursing here? journey actually started um, in the UK. Um, I went in, I started nursing in 2008. Um, when I first moved here, going back, when I first moved here, I just moved here after my BEC. So I wrote my BEC in April, like everybody does. Mm. And then we're like, okay, long summer holidays, you know? And my mom was like, you know, why don't you people come and visit, mm -hmm. you know? So it was like, okay, we're coming yeah. to visit. You know, young girl, I'm like, okay, when I come, I'm coming to buy my stuff and then I'll go to <laughs> secondary school with it. But then when we came, she was like, well, you guys are this age. Do you want to stay and things? Like I wasn't of the opinion of wanting to stay fully because I wanted to see my friends. You know, that time your friends are more important than your parents. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, um, but she made the, obviously being the head, she made the final decision, discussed it and said, no, you guys are staying. So we stayed here um and then i was like so what am i i really don't i was looking to go to achimota school secondary school mm -hmm. it did happen so i was like okay right we're here went to college even though i'd done my bc it wasn't regarded here as a high stand a high education enough to go to university i mean to um secondary school here so i went to college um to do what we call gmvq in maths and english and then i did a science subject because i was fascinated with science i love science it just something about it just fascinates me so i did my maths english and science those are three things you kind of needed 
Um, when I did that, then I had to, I decided, okay, right, I've got these three things. Can I go to university now? Um, then my science teacher at that time, she was Ghanaian, Mrs. Boating. She said to me, Brenda, you're very good. Why don't you go and do um, nursing or midwifery? I said, no, Mrs. Boating, that's not what I want to do. <laughs> 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 I said, that's not what I want to do. She said, no, Brenda, you're very, very good with your science. You know, in chemistry, you're always showing up. In biology, you're always showing up. And I said, oh. so when I, um, I, I, I sat down with my mom and I said, and my mom was also pushing me into that direction. She said, as a nurse, you always have a job. You'll never be out of a job and things like that. So I said, okay. Then I... When I finished my course, you have to get your transcripts. So I got my transcripts from my college and then I took it, I applied for university through UCAS, like mm. you do. Mm. And my, honestly, I never read my um, trans, like my personal statement from my teacher because back in those days, your, your school or your faculty would have to write a personal statement on your behalf. Oh. And my... Um, Mrs. Boatin, who was her faculty head, said to me, said, wrote in the personal statement, do not um, take her for a diploma. She's better than a diploma. Take her for a degree. But I wanted to go and do a wow. diploma. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I wanted to go and do a diploma because it was easier. It wasn't as full on as the degree. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to take it in bits. And mm -hmm. But she had written. So they actually, went in, when I went for my nursing interview, the panel, there was about three panels and they said to us that we've seen your um, letter from your university, your head, yeah. department head, and they've asked us to offer you a degree. Um, would you want to take the degree? And I said, um, I would like to take the degree, but I think I want to see what it takes. So then I was offered a diploma pathway then I could do an extra 60 credits when I'd finished mm -hmm. to top up to a degree. So that's what I did. Um, yeah, and I did that at Kingston University. Brilliant university. Um, yeah. Great. Yeah. So when did you complete school? I have qualified as a nurse in 2008. 2008. <laughs> wow. How many years now? Too long. <laughs> yeah, that is like 16 years. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I, no, I started in 2008 Eight. and I qualified in 2011. 2011. Just before the Olympics, so I qualified. 13, yeah, 13, 13 years. years. That's... Yeah, 13 years ago. Yeah. And, and within those 13 years, take us through that journey up until where you are now. So I qualified. I've always said one, I'm a nurse through and through. But I love surgical nursing. I love surgical nursing. I love seeing my patients, not for a very long period of time, but that short, sweet intervention and mm. letting them go. Mm -hmm. You know, so I my first job was a, a gynae ward at St. George's in London. Um, I did my management placement there because as an as a nurse in your third year, you do your management placement. So I did my management placement in a gynae ward and then I was offered a job after. So I did, I worked there for about two years. And when I worked there, it was amazing because I could get to go to theater to see the um, surgery happen, the myomectomies and things like that, mm. you know, the, and then, after that i wanted a bit of a change so i went into plastic surgery oh wow. yeah <laughs> so okay. within the same hospital at st george's i got another job um in the plastics ward and it was brilliant i could get and because um it was plastic surgery we were treating both nhs and private patients mm -hmm. Um, because some patients would have actually paid and sometimes there's contracts where some doctors in the hospital have the agreements and stuff like that. So I, I worked in the plastic surgery ward 
and I saw some really interesting things. So gender change and things like that. Mm-hmm. It was quite interesting <laughs> to go to work. That was years back. <laughs> years yes. back. So it didn't start now. No, no, no. That was years <laughs> back. So okay. I saw a couple of those. And then um, after a while, I left plastic surgery. Um, and then I was like, okay, dibble dab in here and there a bit of this, a bit of that, gastric, you know, surgical and um, diabetes, endocrine, you know, been all there. And then after a little while, I was like, oh, do you know what? I want something different, something more, you know? So I felt pregnant with my son. um, And then I thought, you know what? I really want something more family friendly. Mm -hmm. And I'd always seen a job called a health visitor. I was like, ah, what is this health visitor, health visitor, Mm. health visitor? So I was like, (laughs) because it's not a well-known job in the health. So I was like, okay, let me see how it is. So I did my little research um, and I found out that, yes, they work with mothers and babies. It's like, oh, but I only midwives work with mothers and babies. Yeah, Come so... on, at the end of the day, <laughs> how hard is that, you know? So um, then I I, look, I did my research. I applied. At that time, you had to have at least 10 years experience. 10? 10, 10. Of practice. Of practice to become a health visitor. But then, UK being UK, they did a report and realized that in the next this was in 2013 in the next five to six years the current health visitor at that time would have all retired by 2024 this current year (laughs) so they had projected that already they knew because obviously they knew the ages and stuff like that so they did what we call a call to action Whereas if you had two or more years experience, you could go and do this. Okay. So if you know the NMC register, the NMC register has a part one, part two, and a part three. Usually you see just part one and two. Exactly. So health visiting um, part three of the NMC register. Mm -hmm. Interesting. (laughs) So then it gave you a part three because you become a prescriber. So you have the V100 prescribing, which you can prescribe anything you can buy over the counter for people. Then you have the V150, which is, you have the 100 and a little bit of community prescribing. So we can prescribe wound dressings and things like that. Mm -hmm. Then you have the V300. Okay. Which you do as an advanced practitioner. So that gives you what you call an independent prescriber. Mm. So I can prescribe medication independently within my scope of practice. Nice. Mm. So well, you, you consult as part of your I do consult, role yes. So, uh, yes. So like anybody will say, oh, I'm going to see my GP. I've got an appointment with a GP. Sometimes you think you're seeing a GP, but you might be seeing an advanced practitioner. It could be an OT. It could be a physio. It could be a nurse. It could mm. be a dietitian and things like that. Well, that's Great. actually interesting <laughs> to know. <laughs> yeah. So the, the health visitor, how, mm. how long does the... Let's say someone go, wants to go into health visiting. Yeah. The first thing I'll tell them that is they should just write off two years of their life. <laughs> <laughs> they should write off two years of their life. It's an, in, it's an intense program. When I say intense, intense program is basically, ideally the health visiting program should be three years, like a three year nursing degree. Mm. But this has been crammed into two years or 12 months wow so you're literally back to back to back to back to back every week of those 52 weeks in the year you are doing something wow you know there's no the health discipline program there's no oh 
we've got summer holidays. It doesn't work no. like that. <laughs> You're literally every week of the year yeah. you've got assessments. I think it's it's done every twelve weeks. So you do and you do psychology. You do um, what do you call it? Birth from so you look at the child development. So in health visiting, you look at child development from not from birth to 18 mm. and then you look at children with disabilities mm. so autistic and what to look out for and things like that then you learn about mental health mm. you know and with a health visitor you don't just have to be an adult nurse or a child nurse you can be a midwife you mm. can be a psych psych psychiatric nurse mm. because it's a multi-profession you would go to a home and you would see a mom and a baby. That mom will probably have mental health, mental mental health, health issues. issues. Yeah. 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 Wow. So you'll be like, oh, okay, this is where my, I can draw my yeah. other skills. You yeah. Know? yeah. And like, you know, you're like, oh no, I couldn't do that. No, it's, it's a multi-professional. So you just don't go in, you know, I've, I've cared for mothers who have got postpartum psychosis. I had a mom one time who postpartum psychosis and she actually went to spend their life her and her husband's life savings 15,000 pounds <laughs> wow. wow and bought a cruise but she herself did not realize that's what she had done can it be that serious yeah and we had to section her 15,000. 15,000. She had bought a cruise. 15,000 pounds. I'll go mad. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go she mental. Literally the savings she had. But she she wasn't, she didn't realize that's what she had done. But we had to, we had to section her because at that point she wasn't, she didn't know what she was doing. No, that's 15,000. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Gone, blown. Yeah. 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 Like that. Yeah. So, well, <laughs> the husband managed to recover most of most of the money because then she had to write to the um cruise company yeah. um we had we gave him letters to support that mm. his wife is not well mm. and yeah and just from their first trial that just tipped the woman over oh. so um held visited mm -hmm. and the advanced nurse practitioner is it was it the same program or you had to do the advanced nurse so, course so when I so health visiting is a program on its own hmm. um, and I think many universities um, do it and you can apply and, and it's a, a year I think when I did it I did it in a year so I started my health visiting in 2013 and I qualified in 2014 I started January 2013 and I qualified January 2014. So it's a year's program. Um, you do that. And if you want to become an advanced nurse pra practitioner, <laughs> honestly, how I became an advanced nurse practitioner, it, it was just, you know, I just thought, okay, let me just try something. Because I'm, I'm one for when I am doing something, I always want to challenge myself. Yeah. You know, I always want to see, oh, what, what else can I do, yeah. you know, um, or give my all to. So advanced nurse practitioner, after health visiting, I worked as a health visitor for about four years locally. And then you, 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 you then grow and then you become like, okay, am I getting complacent? Am I getting... Is this going to be just it? Yeah. I've, like, I've seen it all. Oh, I can't, yeah. you know? Yeah. And that's not what I wanted. So I was like, no, let's, let's, let's leave this here. Mm. You know? And then I, because they were withdrawing funding and stuff. And I wasn't seeing my line manager as regularly. Because health visiting is a very, you work, it's, loan working is very high in health visiting. Because everybody has their sort of, I'll say patch they mm. work, yeah. you know, so you could have, uh, like, let's say the whole of Basildon, you'd have West Basildon, East Basildon, South Basildon, North Basildon. Mm. And maybe with West, the West team, you have maybe London Hills, just a small patch 
of mm. you know mothers and stuff like that you know and they'll all come to you are you and you hardly see your manager so i used to see my manager maybe once a month once every two months and for me men mentally i wanted to protect my mental health yeah. as well yeah so i said i need a manager where i can if something is happening i can run and say come here this is happening we need to do this yeah mm. you know um i was going home i used to remember having sleepless nights because i've seen a child and i want to bring that child home with me because the child is not in a great place mm. But how do you do that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, no, it's not your just... child. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, it's not your child at all. So, I, you, I remember I was speaking to my husband, and he said to me, "You're not sleeping," you know, and I said, "Yes, I'm not," because my kids, the kids I see, they're always on my mind, mm. and I. Always, he said, "Well, then, if you're not happy, or oh, this is it, you might as well find something else." Yes. Yeah. Mm. And I said to him, what am I going to find? What am I going to do? And he said, ah, you're a nurse. Just resign. Don't apply for a job yet. Just go and do agency. Just see what is out there. Mm -hmm. So I resigned. And then I I said, okay, I can't, I don't want to go back to the hospital anymore. Mm -hmm. What I want to do is progress my career. But into what? So my thought was, okay, I've got my health visiting. My health visiting, you do, I've done my prescribing, which is a V100. Mm -hmm. So let me go and pick my prescribing and see what else. So I'd seen independent prescriber. I said, ah, what is this? And this independent prescriber. prescriber. Okay. So I did some digging, some research. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I can even pay for it myself and go and do the course. And because we're just coming out of COVID, people had not really gone back mm -hmm. to face-to-face -to -face education yeah. anymore. Mm -hmm. So I applied for the independent prescribing. And then I started the course. It's a six months course. I, I paid for it. I did it. I passed it. And then I was like, okay, I've done the course. But I've not done, I didn't, I've, I've done, I've done the course in a backward route. Yeah. Because to be an independent, you had, because you had to do, become, do the physical assessment. So assessment and consultation, physical assessment, how to assess mm -hmm. a patient physically and all of that. So I realized that another university was doing that, which I could jump on the course. So then I called them up, I applied, I got it, I went and I did the physical assessment course. So these two courses are also part of the advanced practice, practice courses. Course. Okay. So I was like, okay, let me do those two. That means if I want to do the full advanced yeah. practice, I've done at least two, two. modules yeah. out of the six mm. because the advanced practice modules has six components mm. to it. So I said, okay, if I've done the two now, then I can see what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So then I started using that to work. You know, I could, I wasn't fully confident in my skills, but I said, okay, with practice, loads of practice, I'll get there. And then I was working in um, a hospital, but a section called the GP streaming. So basically, GP streaming is if you come into hospital and it's not life threatening, you don't need physical A and E, they will send you to the GP streaming. So GP streaming is in A and E. So okay. it's for the, oh, I've got diabetes, my medication, I forgot to put in a request, my, yeah. my um, GP is closed, they're not going to open on Monday, I don't have the tablets for the weekend then we prescribe mm. something for you so that you can get your, the rest of your medications on the Monday. Yeah. Or you've developed an idiopathic DVT. Mm. That is not A and E. No. <laughs> you know, you can have your rivaroxaban um, yeah. Yeah. and then 
you get your scan next week you mm. know so that that those kind of cases mm -hmm. we were kind of looking at so when i did i was working there I came across a really, really, really lovely doctor who was very, very much into education and very, very education and focused and driven and wanting you to become the best you can mm. push. He was very, 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 very push, like pushing you to be your best potential, to get to your yeah. best potential. So. Um, I, I worked with him on a couple of occasions. He normally worked weekends, so on a Saturday I would go and work. So he said, I worked with him on a couple of Saturdays, and he said, I went to him one Saturday, and I said, oh, can I sit with you to watch your consultation because I'm, I'm doing this and that, and I don't know where my career is going to go, you know. So I did a couple of consultations with him. After his shift, he sat me down and he said, oh, well done for coming to you know ask me i'm all up for education and things like that i want to, and it's good so he said to me what do you want to do mm -hmm. i said i don't know so he said tell me about yourself so i told him i'm a nurse health visitor and you could see when i was talking he was very very excited mm -hmm. so he said oh i want you to come and work for me i said what do you mean i really want me to come and work for you he said no you have really, really unique skills. Mm -hmm. I want you to come and work for me. So I said, okay. In what capacity, mm -hmm. you know? He said, you've done these two courses. What is your goal? So I said to him, you know, given the opportunity, I'll finish the MSc program, mm -hmm. you know, and work as an advanced nurse practitioner because I'd like to see a difference. I want to see a difference, make a change in people's lives. I'd want to make that 16 year old girl who not lose their father like I did. Mm. So I said, oh, that's really, really good. And that's really, really positive to hear. So um, he said, okay, this is, so I said, I'd seen the course and everything. It was going to cost me an extra ten thousand pounds to finish the whole module, the mm. whole MSc module, mm. Mm. which I mean, at that time I was like, okay, right, I'll do it, but I'll do it in stages. Yes, yeah. So we went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, for about seven, eight months on what my job would look like if I came to work for for him. Um. So he said. I, I like the fact that you don't, you're not restricted. You don't see just adults because mm -hmm. another thing is you see a lot of health and um, advanced nurse practitioners. They're quite restricted. Mm. I don't see children, mm -hmm. but for me, we've all got what we call transferable skills. skills. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And that's where I transfer my health visiting skills mm -hmm. into my role. At the moment, I can say I am probably the only advanced nurse practitioner in my surgery that does six to eight week checks for moms and babies. Oh, wow. That's, that's, that's Because good. that is something that yeah. only GPs do. Do, yeah. You know, so I'm one of them that does it, but it's within... You know, I did the extra training, for yeah. it, but then I applied my my health visiting skills yeah. to it. So when I'm doing that mom and baby check, I'm not just doing the mom and the baby. I'm giving that mom. I'm also checking mom for postnatal depression. Mm -hmm. I'm referring. I know where I can refer her to. I know what to sign poster. I know what to look for. I know the certain cues they'll give based on my experience. Well, <laughs> well it's, it's actually lovely to think of, I mean, like you're already saying, the fact that you can transfer all of these skills and, you know, bring it together in, in one place. Mm -hmm. So um, you've talked about all these transferable skills mm -hmm. and how you can get them into your role to make it, you know, look mm -hmm. good, look mm -hmm. great and all that. What, if you, if someone wanted to get to the ANP role, mm -hmm. what's, What's the advice you give them? What's the step you tell them to take? I would tell them to 
make it unique don't follow what everyone else is doing mm -hmm. you know if i went and i, I did every, what everything everybody else is doing would i be here no my role make yourself stand out as i as, as i said i'm i'm a health visitor not a lot of i'll say are people that come from the africa nigeria in nigeria be it ghana or any of these countries when they come here or uh, they're working on the wards don't let the ward be your end point mm -hmm. explore other things yeah you know go and look at go and look at health visiting go and look at school nursing what do they do mm -hmm. how can your role and start putting yourself out there try it even if you don't know how to go about it get in touch with people mm -hmm. call that manager of that um, com um uh center and say listen i i just have an interest do you know um can i just come and volunteer a day or come and see what you are doing mm -hmm. you know if you're on placement as a student and they give you all this childcare placements to do go and and see what they do there and that's the only way you can transfer you can make yourself um different and advance into your role because yes we've got advanced nurse specialists yes specialists in cancer great you eat breathe cancer every day amazing you know you've got advanced nurse specialists in gynae mm -hmm. you know but i want to be able to i always say i'm jack of all trade but Should i'm be versatile exactly versatility yeah. is very very so important is, is that before or after entering the going to the AMP because you, you, you advocate that people get these skills before yes. going into the AMP yes, program. Yes, I would say yes because when guess what when you're doing when you when you apply to do the AMP program you have an interview. You have an interview with the co the the mo well at my university I did it at you I had an interview with the the module the course leader mm -hmm. the yeah and then I had an interview with my the who is going to supervise you now based on that interview they can say whether they'll take you or not, not. Mm -hmm. you so know? it's not straightforward like you can just apply for it and then you get it. no because you have to have somebody who will supervise you and the person who can supervise you has to be of a consultant and above or oh. registrar and above oh okay i didn't know that yeah <laughs> so it has to be so my my supervisor was a gp consultant hmm. and a clinical director so that's who supervised me hmm. you know so because you can't just say oh i'm going i'm i'm going to be an amp because it's a band eight role okay a ban A is an advanced nurse practitioner ban eight role ban eight A. That's where you start from. Wow. You know, so if it's a ban eight role, you're not going to have a ban seven or a ban six supervising you. No. Exactly. It has to be a doctor or anyone above. Wow. wow. Or another AMP <laughs> with three <laughs> years yeah. more like... experience. <laughs> wow. <laughs> ban That's... eight. Yeah, yeah, like that is incredible. But it's not hard especially now the kind of um quality of nurses coming with different mindsets not taking you know the normal status quo mm -hmm. you know we've got what well, digital digital nursing and mm -hmm. you know so with that kind of you 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 it's you can do it mm -hmm. yeah. you know there's a lady i i follow on instagram and she 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 even aspired me even more because she qualified as a nurse only three years ago and she's a clinical nurse lead how, how is that possible when i qualified in 2011 i would not have thought oh i can become a clinical yeah. nurse lead yeah. in three years no but no she's like oh i'm a clinical nurse lead and she's really worked her way up yeah. there you know, within three years. Yeah, that's... So if you can put yourself out there, I don't see why not. Yeah. Yeah. 
great great yeah that's so interesting. It's, it's marvelous you you should definitely have some sort of inspiration from somewhere to 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 have gone through all of this i think for me my inspiration comes from um my childhood of when my my dad passed away that was my my i'd say my (laughs) u-turn you know and working in primary care now i can see how i can make a difference and not make as I always say, another 16 year old, yeah. you know, feel that they've lost everything. Yeah. Cause that's how I felt when I lost my father at 16. So I'm always pushing, how can I mm-hmm. help that child not lose Your what family. I lost? Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. I mean, our last one, last question before if Francis yeah. has yeah. anything. As an advanced nurse practitioner um, and as a person of color, what are the challenges like? What should people look out for those who are, you know, because people are really interested. You in know, um, I think I met you guys um, at the networking event. Yeah. And like um, that lady said, the glass has been broken. Let's challenge everybody else. Yeah. yeah. You know, I don't say. Dr. Neem exactly yeah. dr nim yeah i don't i don't say oh because i'm black i can't get here yeah. i was the only black health visitor in my team mm-hmm. i was the only black health visitor in my team but that didn't make me think oh i can't do this i can't do that no because at the end of the day if i can push myself to get clearly i'm here because i somebody has seen something in me yeah yeah. to give me that opportunity Mm -hmm. so if you've given me that opportunity i'm not going to let you down no i'm going to work and make sure i work to the best of my abilities yeah and make that change and make that difference yeah you know so it's about yes i'm a person of color but at the end of the day i need to push that push and push through because at the end of the day, I might be inspiring somebody else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that it that is it. Yeah. Great. Great. Right. It's it's really been an interesting discussion. Because this is the first time I'm ever hearing about health visiting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or there was like there was an there's an actual program for it yes. that people do it and then yeah. they've got a title as a yeah. health visitor yeah. and all that. And they're called specialist community scuffing, specialist community public health nurses specialist community public health yeah. nurses well wow, it's, it's actually it sounds good yeah so yeah when i sign out now i've put advanced nurse practitioner health visitor scp all the signatures all the signatures everything should go there all the titles should appear just like doctors yeah. You see MD, you see M, mm. what, 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 what? F C H M D. Exactly. So are... why can't we let be... it appear? Exactly. Even if you're a chief, put chief. <laughs> what, exactly. what, what, what? <laughs> let it be there because at the end of the day, you it wasn't handed to you on no. a plate. You worked for it. So why aren't you proud of it? Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. You know? yeah. Anything from you, prizes? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like we've we've talked about everything we we need to talk yeah. about in this episode and it's been an interesting conversation yeah. like, as you you said i think we'll get you on subsequent episodes to discuss other spheres of your experience yeah so, yeah. yeah i think we can wrap up this um, episode and bring the conversation to an end yeah thanks so much for staying tuned in with us till this point i know it's been a long conversation but it's been an interesting one as well if you enjoyed this episode please click that subscribe button if it's your first time. Click the like button. Tell someone about FNF Catchy Dialogues. Share our video to your friends and family. And until we meet in the next episode, it's peace. Bye.